Hi, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Jenny from The Glittered Rose. For this week's episode of Two Ways Tuesdays, we're looking at the gorgeous set from Alter New called Never Stop Dreaming. It's a lovely set. It's a Craft Your Life project kit. It has lots of lovely sentiments along with the roses and that centre um, die for you to stamp your sentiment out on. I made these cards with the um, idea that you can really use these techniques with any die cut, with any die set. So I didn't use the included embossing folder because I wanted to show that, that these cards can make, be made with anything really. My whole idea behind Two Ways Tuesdays is that you can make your stash go further by using the same items but just in different ways. So if this is of any interest, please stick around, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Okay, let's jump into making the cards. Okay, so to start with, I've taken my antique gold pigment ink from Alter New. It's a lovely sort of rich metallic gold and... I'm just positioning where I want it on my um, my A2 piece of card. I've actually cut it down a little bit smaller than A2. I think I've taken an, an eighth of an inch off um, the top and sides. So there'll be a slight border when I pop it onto a card panel or a card. So I've just stamped it um, in that gold. And I'm going to stamp it again because it didn't stamp quite properly. For this, I want to have um, it basically covering the piece of paper. So I'm going to stamp this um, a couple times and then I'll heat emboss it in clear WOW embossing powder. I really love that WOW offers the large... Um, clear embossing powder it's um it's fantastic but you know I've used it quite a bit and it doesn't really show that I've used a lot <laughs> I've also spilt a lot on my desk so it really does go a long way excuse the back of my piece of paper I um made a whoopsie so I deleted that footage and started again I'm just heat embossing it now. So I'm using the Ranger watercolour paper. I chose this one because it's got the smooth side. So I'm actually using the rough side <laughs> because the smooth side got ruined. But it still stamped really nicely on that rough side. So um, I'm not going to be afraid of stamping on the rough um, watercolour paper anymore. So I'm just going to stamp this again. I'll do it off camera. Um, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've stamped and heat embossed and we're ready to go. So I've grabbed out my clean colour watercolour brushes by Zig Kuritaki. Um, and these, I'm testing them out, they're new to me. So I've wet my paper a little bit and that just helps the um, watercolour flow. For this, I'm not looking at getting the best highlights and lowlights. I'm not worrying too much with that. I wanted a nice sort of loose watercolory painterly effect. Um, I do see some people, you know, really going to town with their, their watercolors. But to me, I really love the loose um, watercolor wash look. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve. Heat embossing your image prior to watercolor watercoloring it is just perfect for me because it you get the walls so it sort of holds the the paint in that you don't have to worry too much about you know it spreading where you don't want it to. Um, I love heat embossing before I watercolor. I've just grabbed out a darker yellow just to put in some um, shadowing, and I'll blend them together. These pens do feel different than using um, watercolour paint and a paintbrush. I do like them. The tips are so fine. So 
for something like this where the petals are very detailed and fine, I think they're fantastic. I think if you were trying to colour in a larger image in a, with a larger area, it could become quite tedious, but these are nice for details. The colours are blending really lovely together. Um, I'm quite happy with them. I'm going to fast forward me painting. Um, I'm a bit of a slow, slow maker. <laughs> so I'm going to fast forward the next section. loving how this is coming out I think it's really sweet when I look at my yellow roses I think that they're lacking a little bit in comparison to the pink so I'm going to pop on a little bit of orange for a little bit of shade and just to make them pop a little bit so um, I'm just blending that orange out with a fine brush and some water the fantastic thing about these Kuretake clean colors is that you can um, blend with water or you can blend with the pens themselves but they're very easy for you to decide how much how much color you want down because then you can just blend it out with some water um, I'm really happy with them I bought um, a set of 90 from Amazon in Japan and they cost me so much less than if I were to buy them in Australia. They're about 550 for a set of 90 and I paid 125. <laughs> you can't go wrong. You can also buy um, the pens separately in Australia or in open open stock. So if I have a tendency to use one colour more than another, I can I know I can replace just one pen rather than having to buy a whole set. I'm just going to colour the rest of the um, yellow buds and roses and we'll get on to the sentiment next. Okay, so I have stamped off camera um, the You Are Incredible that comes with this set onto watercolour paper so it matches and I'm going to die cut it out using the included die. I think this is lovely for a sentiment, so I'm just um, trying to get that in the middle. This is not something I'm good at. <laughs> I really don't die cut evenly, but I'll do my best. That's all you can do. I'll just run this through my die cut machine um, and we'll pop the card together. I'm very appreciative of the time that you spend watching my videos, so I'm very mindful of keeping things um, short and sweet. Like, you don't need to see me cutting up cardstock and making a card base. So I've made the card base, I've made an A2 card panel in pink, I've glued down my watercolour image, um, and I'm just now auditioning where to pop that sentiment. I'm going to be very original and pop my sentiment in the middle. <laughs> where the flowers are placed, I can't do anything clever. I've also popped the sentiment on top of some pop-up foam, just to bring that out a bit. Um, and I think it looks quite nice. So now I'm just popping on some... Um, enamel dots just to finish it off. I'm really happy with how it worked, turned out. 
I love my new Kuritaki clean color. I think that they worked really nicely. Um, and that gold ink that's been embossed just looks really nice. It's really got that sparkle and it matches the roses. So I'm happy. I think that I've made a nice card. And let's get on to the next one. So I'm going to make a different type of a card for this one. I'm going to cut up those roses. I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. So I'm going to stamp it twice just to make sure that I have enough. I'm stamping the image in Versafine Claire in Chianti, which is a really lovely deep um, purpley red, I guess you could say. And I think that this will be really nice. Look how fine um, this ink pad stamps. It's just, I'm just so impressed with the Claire's. There's 12 new colours coming out. Problem is I've got no um, holes, <laughs> free holes for my ink pad storage. So uh, I think I might have to get another storage solution. The thing is that if the new Versafine Claire's were similar colours, I could probably in my mind go, I have similar colours in them. I don't need that new set. But the new 12 colours are just... They look beautiful. They're lighter and brighter. And so in my mind, I'm like, I need them. <laughs> I might just go order them. This is a funny hobby. I'm all for saving money where we can, but I'm also very needy. <laughs> I need the new stuff. Okay, so I've stamped that twice. Um, and now I've got my Ohuhu markers. And I'm using R18, R19, and R20, which is a nice um, natural kind of peachy pink. I really like it. So I did think about embossing these flowers, but I was a little worried about any stray embossing powder getting onto the nibs of my um, alcohol markers. And I don't want that. <laughs> so... I'm quickly just popping down some colour. I'm not worrying too much about um, how this base or first colour goes down. And then I'll go in with my medium colour and then my darkest colour for the shading. And then I'll blend it all with my um, lightest colour again. I will apologise. I can hear that as this video goes on that my voice is getting croaker, croakier and croakier. Tell you what, whatever this thing was, I did a COVID test, it wasn't COVID, but whatever it is, it's not nice. It's been more than two weeks. My daughter's still home. So just bear with me. I'll sound better next video, hopefully. Okay, I'm just going in with my second colour now and just Trying to choose those areas that would be darker and not worrying too much about blending it perfectly because that will happen with my, um, when I go over it again. So just colouring in the darker areas. And now I'm going to grab my darker colour and pop some shadows down. I can't recommend Ohuhu markers more. I just think that they are incredible. I like them more than um, other alcohol markers, other expensive alcohol markers. Um, they've got s so much um, liquid in them. They're fantastic. I will say that the colours don't match up to the colours on the pen, so you really do need to swatch them, but you do get the swatch cards with them. So I just, I look on my swatch cards and then pick out my colours and it works well that way. Um, but they're fantastic. So now I'm just going over the, um, the area with my lightest colour just to blend it. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to um, show you how I colour the leaves and I'll do 
a pink rose as well. Um, and ooh, that's 160, 180 and 200 RV for the rose, the pink purpley rose. They go on so smooth. They're really lovely and easy to use. For the greens, I'm using G420, 440 and 470. Just popping on some light and shade, just colouring them in. Okay, so to be respectful of your time, I'm going to die cut these out. I'm going to colour them all in, die cut them out, and I might separate them into individual rose pieces. And we'll be back. Okay, so off camera I have... Um, emboss some paper. I'm using the beautiful embossing folder by Spellbinders. It's called Flowers and Foliage and I just think it's so sweet. Um, I could have used the included embossing folder but I wanted to make this video accessible for everyone so you can do something very similar if you have similar stamps. You don't have to have the same supplies as I have. Off camera, I've also stamped the sentiment. I stamped it in the beautiful Versafine Claire Chianti and die cut it out using the included um, die. I just think that die is so sweet for sentiments. It's really lovely. I'm not sure why I've not used it before. Um, uh, this set also came with stencils, which... Um, I'm a little over the Elton new stencils, so I decided to hand colour for both cards. I'm just auditioning how I want this card to sit. I'm not sure how to um, pop the flowers on without covering up too much of that beautiful sentiment. I think, you know... <sighs> I want this card to be a bit extra, so I'm going to put a lot of flowers on, but I reckon if you just put that one spray on the corner, that would look really pretty as well. But that's not my vision for this card, so I won't go with that. Alrighty, I like that. I'm going to glue everything down. I'll do that off camera um, and pop some foam squares on my flowers. And then when we're ready to position everything, I'll... um. Do that on camera. Okay, so I'm just popping the roses down now. Um, usually I'm not crazy about the white borders around um, images, but because it's going onto a white base, that sort of hides that white border quite nicely. Um, so, you know, it doesn't worry me when there's that white border around um, the focal images when there's a white backing. The reason I've popped the flowers up on the foam is to give it some level and some extra texture, but also um, because the sentiment is quite flat, it sort of gives space for the sentiment. I'm quite happy with, with how that's looking. The internal turmoil I had trying to work out the placement for these roses. <laughs> but I think it looks quite good. I end up making way too many roses. I didn't need to do two lots. But that just gives me a bit of extra just to fill in some gaps. I don't want it completely even all around. I just want it to look quite organic and, and um, sweet. I think it needs something on this side, on the left-hand side, but I don't think it needs much. So I'm going to break apart this rose and just use a couple of its leaves just for that extra little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone because I have a tendency to go overboard and then regret what I've done. So while I really love the flower, the leaves off the edge, I think getting that in and out of an envelope, it will end up bend, bending and, and make it look a bit ruddy. So I'm going to cut off those leaves and um, I'll glue it onto the card base. 
It's just an A2 card size and I'll be back for the finishing touches. I can't find my rhinestone picker upper at all. I've popped it somewhere and I don't know where. So I am awkwardly picking these rhinestones up using my fingers <laughs> and gluing them down. I think that um, they're a really sweet addition and that it looks quite nice. Just, it's not much, but it's just enough to finish it off. So I'm just popping those on and we'll be done. And here we are, all finished. I'm really happy with the um, end result. I think that the card is really sweet. And here we are, all finished up, the two cards together. Thank you so much for joining me for what is the, um, this is the 14th episode of Two Ways Tuesdays. I can't believe we're up to 14 already. If you found this video useful or interesting, please be sure to hit the like button. Let me know down below which one's your favourite. I'm not sure if I can choose. Um, and um, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye now.